Well, good morning, everyone. How you doing, Fernando? Good morning. We have a Subaru today. We have a Mitsubishi today. We have a Mitsubishi today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Lancer, you know. These are one of the cars you guys ask about. We have this in. Unfortunately, it already has an aftermarket radio in the dash. Pioneer 2300, we already have the dash apart. He left some instructions that we were trying to decipher what they were. Figured them out. He's got a Maestro RR in here. He wants to just make sure that it's mounted up underneath the radio so when he pulls this off, he can easily flash it. Along with, of course, just redoing the harness because it's, it's down there and it's Anyways, so this one is unique as they often are. He has speakers to put in it, these punch speakers here. And when we open the boxes, we found that the factory speakers were already in the empty boxes. So naturally we were like, what? Called him up. He apparently got antsy, he tried to put them in himself. He doesn't like the way he put them in, so he wants us to pull them all back out, do them the right way. And also he'd like to do road killing fast rings on the front doors. For an amplifier, we're gonna put in a five channel Rockford amplifier. The T1005 here with a Stinger power kit. He wants it mounted up underneath this seat here. We'll make a bracket to make that happen. Fernando's get started on this door because I'm gonna go over here and get the radio out all the way, figure out how we're going to make that harness. There's also some wires T-tap behind the, the radio. I don't know why they're there. We're also gonna put a backup camera, the Echo Master Tag Cam. All right, enough playing around. Fernando just informed me he wants me to take a look at the door so that you guys can see what he's been doing. We done with the door. We do the roll kill outside, inside, fast rings, so the way. The final piece right here, as soon as we screw the, the speaker. The cool thing about the speaker is this one has the input and the output for the tweeter. The crossover is built in into the speakers. We have our two leads in here. We have our tweeter connector over here. For the tweeter, we using the factory mount. This just snaps and right there. Just a side note on those speakers. Rockford makes two versions of that speaker. They make the version that we're putting in this that has the crossover built into the back plate and they make a second version that has the crossover mounted exteriorly. The reason why they do that is on cars like this where the tweeter and the mid-range are in the same area, this is a much nicer way to do it. it. It hides the crossover and keeps it from getting wet or you having to mount it somewhere on here or something like that. Problem is, is if the tweeter's on the inside of the car, then you have to run a wire back in. They figured out that they made to make two versions of it. If you're gonna pick up these punch series speakers, make sure you get the version for where you're gonna have the mid-range and tweeter. If they're both on the same panel like this, you're good to go with this, which is the P165-SI. Now on the rear door, he's concerned that it might be hitting the window, so when we get that off, we'll definitely take a look at that. we check in polarity test because we don't know which one is positive and negative in this. I just made my pigtail, trying to match the colors from the factory ones. So we have it backwards. Right now what I wanna do is green is positive. All right. But what we did up front here is we plugged the PT9A, this guy, into these wires here in the factory harness. These wires we know are positive and negative because we have the plug that plugs into this so we can easily figure that out. By doing this, we can 
prevent having to change the wires after the fact. We already went ahead and got the dash a part of this. If you guys have never taken one of these dashes out before, if you open the glove box here, there's two Phillips screws mounted underneath here that need to come out. And then this side panel, there's a screw down here behind the glove box that needs to come out. Pull this side panel off and there's one more screw right here. And then this whole trim panel will come off. Unscrew your factory hazard slash airbag. You're gonna take this out of the factory radio and remount it into the new kit that's in the car. And then of course we um, did it because we're pulling all this out. We're gonna be turning the car on and off and we don't wanna trip any airbags or anything like that. But this is his RR and the installation done on it. You got some T-capped wires here, which are weird because they're or an RR that aren't in. Okay, that's bizarre. I don't know what these two go to yet. I'll figure it out. By cutting these off and leaving the color there, I'll know which wires they need to get hooked back up to. He's got the data wires going up underneath the dash, and of course, they're super tight. Now, he didn't install this. When I say he, I meant whoever the installer is. And this brings us to a good lesson right here, is if you're gonna install something, make sure there's enough wire to, to service it. I mean, this is way too tight. This should be able to come out to here so you can flash it on your laptop or mount it somewhere in the dash. A lot of the time, what this happens from is you put the radio in and then you run the wires after the radios in, not realizing how tight you've just made it we've had a lot of people do that with RCAs and remote turn on wire they'll put the radio in pull the RCA and then you go to pull the radio out and there's no slack on the RCAs let's get this over to the bench figure out what, what the heck is going on here went on to iData's site I found the actual wiring diagram for his car and we can see that it is just those four wires that were connected is all there is for this car as well as as well as power ground an accessory that's all this will ever do for you it's just going to give you gauges steering wheel controls what that means for us is that reverse is not going to be in this guy here this is merely just for we're going to call it entertainment purposes but what we did find in our box of goodies is an obd2 plug remove the t-taps we plug this in if he needs to do anything on his car it is removable we're going to either grab another harness and add in the wires that are missing here or he brought us this guy which is a big factory wiring harness we may try to use this i don't know yet i gotta go back in the car and do some more testing because there's a couple plugs behind there we want to see if there's anything in there that we can use to do our testing we can use our digital multimeter we'll have it set to 12 volts we have this harness here we have this guy here we're going to put one probe to ground which is plenty of ground back here big metal bracket put the car in reverse and then we'll just test these on here all right first one up is a positive take it out of reverse it stayed positive that's not going to be reverse second one is nothing nothing we got power there take it out of reverse hey wouldn't you know magically there's a reverse there's a big white wire right here in this harness that is the reverse trigger so when we put it back in reverse we get 12 volts take it out of reverse we lose 12 volt. And this is one of the harnesses that is in that bundle that he has. Let's head back over to the bench. This is that harness that he bought. He bought it mainly just because he was gonna try this himself and figured this would help him out. And in this case, it's not like it's not gonna help us out. Let's use parts of it to do what we want. So I'm gonna get this all peeled back, cut this out of the harness because we don't need this whole harness. And I'm gonna remove two pins out of this end here to go into this where the data wires are behind the radios. That was that purple, red, and the black, white wires here that were T-tapped in.
just went ahead and pulled it out and tried to get it to clip into this harness. The pins are slightly different, so it won't lock in place. So what that means is we're pretty much done with this. We will keep this harness though, and we'll set this aside. Grab one of these. I believe this is a Toyota plug. I might have some scrap ones of these. Let me check my bin. So I found the spare parts that I think I need. This is from a Toyota. We have a lot of these left over from doing the Toyota harnesses and remove two wires out of here and see if they fit. All right, that one fits a little better. Now we have all the pieces in place, so that all we have to do is plug everything out. All the T-taps are in the car. We'll go ahead and pull out, fix those wires if they're damaged. Done. So what we got going on here is obviously we have the Maestro piece over here, which we're going to make a mount for to go underneath the radio so that he can get to this USB, which we'll talk about in a minute. Here is our OBD2 plug-in. Have our connectors right here that we can plug into this. So that'll be good. This is going to plug into that harness to give us the reverse trigger. We have the main harness here. Here's all our wires to go off to our amplifier. We have the backup camera in and ready to go, so that'll plug in, and of course the data connection. Now what we want to do, here's the radio and the mount. Take this guy and mount it like this, so that he can just plug in his USB right here, and that way all the wires will reach and go in behind. What I'm gonna do is take a measurement here, two and a half by seven, cut a piece of half inch plastic, and then I'm gonna tunnel a groove in it so that this will mount this right here, and there's screw holes here on the side these screw it right in and that'll lock that thing in place I'm gonna take it back over to the bench I'm gonna mark where my tunnel needs to be and then we'll bring it back over to the saw and make a u-cut in this notched it let's take it back over there and see how it fits Yeah, it fits pretty good. Add a couple pieces of foam to this guy here so that this doesn't want to slide around. It'll lock it in place and we'll get the thing screwed into the side. This guy is mounted. It clears the radio bezels we just saw. He'll be able to plug into this USB right here once he takes that off. That's all he wants. This is cool, this is all good. So I'm gonna get an amp mount made. First thing we wanna do is get this seat out. To get the seat out and lift these guys up here, there's one over here on this side and there's two more in the back back here. Tip this seat back so that we can figure out what we need to build to hold this amplifier. Now a lot of the times how these pieces are gonna come off have two forms of clips. You just kinda pop them from the side and then they usually slide back because there's usually a third clip here. Fernando and I have talked about it and his plan because th this amplifier is a great amp because it's so small but it's it's thin and long and they have this that gets in the way and this is just an, a weird place to put this underneath the seat in this particular car but this is where he wants it what we're thinking about doing is i'm going to make a, a abs piece that comes this way and across it's going to be kind of l-shaped and it's going to bolt underneath here and then it's going to come up into this area and we're going to have a a riser that comes up to attach to this bar here because this bar doesn't move and that way that'll be our two contact points to keep this amplifier nice and firm and secure. Our signal wires are gonna come out this side. Our power wires are gonna come out this side. I might flip the amp. I don't know yet. I kinda wanna flip it and have the power on this side because the power is gonna go out that way anyways and the RCAs need to come up here. Yeah, I'm gonna flip it. I want it this way. There's these cuts here and there's more cuts back up in there for wire to run in. And this is gonna be a shorter run from here up into the dash. That way our power and ground won't have to crisscross. Cut this piece out, get this mocked in here so that we can get this wiring done. So this is what we've come up with. This guy right here is that piece we were talking about. The notch lifts up underneath this. And then of course we have the L over here and this just slides in like this. This sits down on top of it. And the amplifier just is gonna go just like this. Power wire will run that way. Bigger wires, RCAs and everything else will go up that way. So we have that done. Now I know I didn't like film that part of it. I'm sorry, you guys have seen me build an amp board before. I think the finished product is, is usually the, the better part of it. Let's get this over to the workbench. Let's get the amp mounted on it. Let's get some wires run. Let's get this thing in the car.
What I want to do is get this under the seat here where it's gonna go and then I'm gonna go up to the front so that I can run the wires the way they need to go because there's plenty of slits in the carpet up here that all this stuff can run through. So now I'm gonna slide the seat back, go up to the front, and we'll start running all our wires. Get the back seat out because we have the sub wire that's gonna go back here. Most back seats, there's just a latch that you pull up on, but don't just assume that's what there is. Feel around in there for the latch because some of them have latches that you turn, some of them have latches that you just pull out and then this just pops right up. Be careful, you don't wanna break the latches that hold the seat in place. Plenty of, of spaces here to run this wire through. There's tons of gap. There's a clip here that goes right here. I undid it so that I could fold the seat back. There's also a, a threaded bolt right here that we can use as a ground. We'll sand this paint away. But right now what I want to do is Fernando's waiting for me to put this through the firewall and run the power wire first. Luckily this car is an automatic. We were able to drill through where the factory clutch is. Here there's this bracket right here and right here in the corner we could drill a hole for the power wire. Amplifier is in and connected. All the wires are run, our ground is in place. All we need to do is put this clip back under here where it was, there's our ground. And then we can set the seat down, bolt it back in because all the adjustments can actually be done from the backside. Amplifier wiring is done. What we have coming out of here is the sub wire, the power ground and remote. And then the speaker wires with the remote looping around into some stinger speed wire. And then over here we went out to our six RCAs. underneath the hood the wire coming to this side we make a mount it's a quarter inch this is gonna sit right here oh cool yep but first let me take a selfie wow so they got all kinds of covers exactly. over this thing yes exactly so this one goes here he only got one boy this must be fun when you need to jump start this car i know right it goes here and we have our mount fuse holders in the amp is in the wires are behind the radio so we're all good there there's two things we have left to, well there's three things we have left to do Fernando's going to run to the back of the car and run forward the backup camera I'm going to go into the car and take all the t-taps out that are in there and fix all those so that those are all good and then we have to put the sub in the enclosure which is really cool so those are the three things we have left to do before we can put it back together and listen to it and the clock is ticking we have these guys right here which are the t-taps that are on this we got that connector plug that into there run that up into the dash and then up here in the dash you can see that guy right there he wants us to pull that one out and hardwire it in and then we still have the two that are located here behind the radio when you pull those things off what you want to do is make sure that there aren't any like when you pull them off check for cut wires if there's cut wires and you want to strip it back put a little bit of solder on there to solder it all back together a lot of the times you're okay most of the times why these don't work is because the wires are too thin and it's not getting in and making contact it spreads apart they're just a crappy way to do it supposedly t-tap stands for temporary tap don't use t-taps unless it's a temporary thing if you want it to be permanent make it a permanent connection 
In this case, the wire is so thin that it barely is even making contact. Like you can almost, like there's a dot of copper that's showing through here. It's a good thing. So all we have to do with these is tape these back up and then retape this harness. taps are out we have the plug plugged in the one is gone back there we have the harness behind the radio all taped back up so all that nonsense is out that's good now what we're going to do is we have this box right here that one put his woofer in it box we have this guy right here this is one of those corner mount boxes this is a really cool box somebody definitely this is this is a pre-made but it's a stack fab pre-made so as you can see somebody stack fab this whole box you can tell back here by the pyramid like shape put a Mitsubishi logo right over here in the carpet nice nice box I have no idea who makes it though because they have a really bad logo in the box but if you recognize it check them out we'll get the speaker cup off so we can solder some wires in. Uh, I might glue it in. All right, never mind. We won't take it out because it looks like it's glued in. Solder it from the front here. Let me go grab the woofer. Subwoofer in this is the new RW10D4. That's a dual four ohm boys coil. We need this to be two ohm for the amplifier, so we're gonna wire up our box with two sets of leads. So we can come over here to go to the positives. We can come over here and go to the negatives. Essentially what we're gonna do is take two wires and they're gonna attach the terminals like this and then come off into these terminals. So we have two leads. We're gonna connect those to our speakers, positive, negative, positive, negative, and get this thing screwed in. All right, so now all we need to do is connect our wires up. Alpine does give you jumpers that you can jump, so you only have to run one set of leads over here. I prefer to run two. It's only a little bit more work, and I feel it looks and performs just a little bit better. I don't always have the greatest of luck with those jumpers. Now we're also gonna be adding a grill to it. Alpine does offer a grill for their woofers. It's a really nice grill, and they're for S-type or arc, and inside, they give you screws and logos depending on which sub you're hooking it up to. Make sure when you put it in, the indention for the grill is here. So make sure you put it on the bottom. And then it comes with these guys here. They're gonna have 10s, 12s, whatever marked on the side of them. One is clear and one is black. According to the instructions here, black is for our type, clear is for S type. And what they're designed to do is go into these holes on the woofer and it's going to hold the woofer in place and also hold the grill in place. Let's go get this into the car. Sub wire is right here. Put some ferrules on it, color coded it. It'll reach where we need it to. Instructions would have been really cool, but apparently it just goes all the way to the floor. All right, well, if you paid extra for the Mitsubishi logo, that was probably a waste, because the way this is gonna sit in here, you're really not gonna see it. It's in, it's good. So if we haven't stretched it enough, the one thing I always wanna check, in any car, anytime replacing speakers, add an amp, doesn't matter. Test your polarity. Make sure all the speakers are moving in the right direction. 
so we just found out we had the driver's door out of polarity that's why we always do these tests these things happen remember there's a lot of connections between that speaker and that amplifier lots of places to screw up don't think you're perfect all right we got greens we're good what we're doing now is we're playing negative 5 dbs at a thousand hertz on the radio up front and what we're looking for as you just saw was that blue light turn it up until that blue light comes on red lights bad dial it down blue light comes on uh, and boom it's off do the same to the rear on and then we'll just okay playing track nine sub all right, there we go. If you want it boomier, turn up your bass EQ. All right, so the gains are set all across the board. We have the crossover points where we wanted them on front, rear, sub. We did a little listen. Do we have it tuned the way we want it? It's killing it for sure. You liking it? Yeah, I like it. it sounds way better than it did when it showed up oh, this morning. Way better. I don't know what was wrong with these things this morning, but it's amazing what a little roadkill and some fast rings can do to improve the sound. Hey, good tune. And a big yeah. amp. Big amp helps yeah. too. This is all set for all you guys with Mitsubishi's out there. We hope you enjoyed this. For all you guys that don't have Mitsubishi's, we hope you still enjoyed it. Have a good nice night. Fernando. On to the next one. Bye.